Well, next up on the Ron Johnson Show, we're going to have Carly Applin. Carly Zucker, as most of you may know now. Uh, but Carly is a do-it-all mom, uh, TV personality, radio personality. But more importantly, she's a philanthropist. Uh, I had a chance to be on Carly's show a while back. And now the tables have turned. I get to have Carly on my show as I bring Carly Applin Zucker into the show. Carly, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Good well, to see you your know, face. It's been a while. I know you too. I feel like I only see you on social media, like or, yeah. you know, or something with the kids. Uh, but but let's talk sports. You know, when you talk about hockey, traveling, mom, moving, kids, life isn't easy. Doesn't get easier. Um, how do you do it? Like, how do you do it all? It's a it's a one day at a time, I think. And I I truly believe everybody has their own busy, right? So my busy is so much different from somebody else's busy. So whether you have kids or don't have kids or have animals, like everybody's busy is your own busy. And so mm -hmm. you just kind of manage it as you go. And it is really one day at a time. I mean, we could decide as when Jason's in season and he's in Pittsburgh, we could decide 24 hours before, I think me and the kids are going to come out and see you. And so we pack everybody up and we get on a flight and we head out there. So it, you know, it's just, it's really taking it day by day and just, staying on top of what the kids need and they have what they need we're all good yeah and you know kids talk about children's hospital that's how i met you you know fun story for those that don't know uh the first time like one of the first times i really met carly uh she told me to turn around look forward and then i found out behind me she had gotten undressed and put a new dress on uh we were part <laughs> of a fashion show and then of course i had to meet her husband like right after and i'm like sorry man like I guess I was the, the the unlucky guy that had to be her shield because I was the least perverted guy of the group. Um, it girl, uh, the women included. Yeah, women included there. So yeah, the models there, they were. I mean, they definitely got just butt naked. Like I, yep. I mean, because I remember Heather Fleck asking me that same question because when she did the show, she's like, "So, do we all like go in our corners and change or what?" And I said, "Hey, it's whatever you're comfortable with. We're all models mm -hmm. back here." just do what you got to do like it's gonna happen like i think we're all adults at this point um but you know and then i got to know carly and jason jason you know came out with chad greenway my daughter was selling friendship bracelets her daughter came out and helped as well and and so it's been fun to get to know you guys but you guys inspire me when you look at gift 16 and giving back to the children's hospital i mean you guys have done so much for the minnesota children's masonic hospital um where, where does that start or where'd that come from yeah, I mean, the story behind that is is pretty long. And I, I, it all starts with the name Tucker Hellstrom, right? He was a young boy who was battling osteosarcoma at Masonic Children's Hospital. Jason did a visit there with the Minnesota Wild at the time, happened by chance to meet Tucker, um, came home, told me, wow, I met this really, really cool kid today. Um, you'd really like him. We talked about it for a little while. And then truly, we just kind of moved forward, right? And then it, it happened to be that we had a, I had a mutual friend with his mother and we found out that Tucker was having his leg amputated. He was a big athlete and um, he was struggling at that time. Of course, the young kid getting I mean, anybody having a limb amputated is yeah. a life changing, you know, very tough situation. So um, they asked if Jason would give him a stick and we said, well, would it be OK if Jason actually showed up and gave him the stick and, and met him or and talked to him again? And. I wanted to meet him. So they said, yes, we were the first people to see him besides his family after. And Jason sat and played video games with him. We talked to the family, grew a really, really amazing bond. And we met, started meeting other people at Masonic Children's Hospital, whether it was doctors, nurses, just the staff working there. And we thought this is the place we want to give our time, our energy, our money. It was really important to us. Unfortunately, Tucker passed away. Um, and that really solidified the fact that we wanted to help his family create a legacy there for him. And I mean, his mother is doing incredible work um, in the wake of his death. And so we're just honored to be a small part of trying to keep his legacy alive. Yeah. And, and you know, and I, I see it in your kids because I tell people all the time, like kids do what they see. And so for people that try to act like, oh, you know, I don't know where my kids are learning this from. Well, then that's the problem if you don't know where they're learning it from. And mm -hmm. I'll never forget, we were at Shields selling bracelets out front. And uh, your daughter, I think Sophia, 
mm-hmm. was extremely shy about it. Like Jason came over, he's like, Hey, Sophia wants to know if it's okay if she, and I'm like, yeah, like she definitely can come celebrate, you know? So for a young girl to even want to get out there and talk to the people, help the other girls sell bracelets, you know, I could tell she was shy at first, but then once she got to realize all these girls are her age, you know, 10, 11, 12, uh, cause how old is she now? She's 12. Yeah. Yeah. Going yeah. Cause 20, I remember right, yep. nowadays, but <laughs> yeah, I remember when you were pregnant, when you first came on my show, my radio show, and I didn't know you were pregnant, but you told me, and I didn't leak it. I didn't leak it to the <laughs> world, but you were telling me like, I didn't know if I wanted to come out. Cause nobody really knows I'm pregnant. Um, and I think it was Hendrix, right? Is who you, you were pregnant Pro- with at the time? I mean, pro- who knows these days? I mean, <laughs> could have been Stella, could have been Hendrix. Who knows? I mean, we're just we're yeah. trying to figure out: is it Mark Rosen or Jason? Who's the father? We don't know. We don't know who the father truly is, but. Uh, well, I'm gonna guess Rosie's still shooting blanks at this point. So, oh God, <laughs> Ron! Oh my God. <laughs> So Jason's safe there. Um, yeah, true. <laughs> but yeah, no. you... You're, you said it though. I mean, kids truly, it, it's so important not to just do it for your, you know, for the community or just to do it as an adult, but to take them with you on that journey, right? Yeah. So it's, yep. when we go to the hospital and now, you know, COVID restrictions are still in place, but we're trying to bring the kids with us to as much as we can so that they see it and that they're a part of it because you can tell them, but when they're a part of it and just, just like your daughter did, your da- you supported your daughter doing this huge mission and she was doing it herself. She wasn't just watching mom and dad do it. And so I think right. it's super important for them to be a part of it. Yeah. And we were, we were excited to go down and that's how they found out about, I mean, it, it became full circle because we went down to the children's hospital because uh, one of the twins that were helping us, her mom is uh, in the NICU unit down there. And so we went down there and I, I, the Gophers, thank you, PJ Fleck and Heather Fleck and the Gopher family for giving me a jersey. So I was able to get one of the jerseys of my own, but it had to roll the boat. I signed it. We put it up in, uh, I think it's Kyle Rudolph's locker room mm-hmm. or end zone. Um, yep. And then they got to hear the other stuff about the Jason Zucker, you know, and Carly Zucker uh family studio and all the other stuff there and and we're going to take them back because of course yeah same thing we had the COVID restrictions so there were like certain things we couldn't do and the kids wanted to meet kids but they're like ah we you know we can't really do that right now um and so we just want to continue we did we did buy more bracelets from a company to kind of make it long lasting and we're working on that process but carly when you look at hockey and let's let's switch gears you're you're i mean let's be honest you're a hot hockey wife Oh man, thank you. When you. I'm an old hockey. I'm like the oldest hockey wife on the planet. So thank you for putting hot in front of there. Cause I'm at but, a point in my life where, you know, other women are offended when somebody's like whistling to them on the street or yelling at them. And I'm the one that's like, if anybody would just give me that honor, I would be thrilled. I wouldn't be offended at this point. Like just <laughs> yell anything at me. It would, I, I would feel good about myself. So like, what did Jason do? If you slide into my DMs, I'm not offended. I would love that. Like, send me, send me those pics that are inappropriate for other people because I will get self-esteem off of that. So, so yeah, as so a as you. a as a hot hockey wife, though, like early on when Jason approached you, hockey player, professional athletes sometimes get a bad rap. Like, what did Jason do to kind of disarm you? Well, I mean, a lot of alcohol. No, I'm just kidding. No, no. Um, <laughs> I, it, for me, it was, for me, it was, he, he's, he is younger than me, you know, he's mm-hmm. significantly younger than I am. So when I met him and I had a daughter at the time, it was, I wasn't at a place where I had, I wanted to just, you know, I didn't need something serious right away, but I wasn't at, I was at a different point in my life, right? Mm-hmm. When you have kids, your focus shifts. So I was at a different point in my life. And to me, it wasn't, oh, he's a hockey player and this is so cool or any of that. It was what structure and what does that mean in our lives and Mm so he turned out to be and is the greatest guy i've ever met in my life he is just so responsible so wonderful he's so good with our kids and i couldn't ask for a better partner in life and i learned that quickly and so as much crap as i give him he truly is the my best friend and the best partner and i learned that really quickly about him he showed me who he was and he's never really changed he's been this really solid person in our lives he met Sophia after six months and that really solidified it. He met Sophia and we became this family and it was really fast. And so I think for me, there was a lot of hesitation right away because he not only was younger, but being in the sports world, there's a lot of uncertainty with that. And we've seen that with trades and other things. And now we've had two more kids and 
we just, you know, we just are taking it, like I said, day at a time. And when you're looking at, so last thing for you, and it may be not the last, but this is maybe one of the last, when you look at the Minnesota sports world, I mean, you got mm -hmm. the wild, you got the Timberwolves, you got the Vikings, uh, who am I missing? Wild Timberwolves, Vikings. Well, I mean, we have the Lynx, we have- Lynx, I'm missing somebody. Oh, Twins, sorry, baseball. Oh, the Twins. Twins, I'm like, I know I forgot somebody else too. Lynx, Twins. And so when you look at this town and then you've been in Pittsburgh, I grew mm -hmm. up in Pittsburgh. My dad played for the Steelers, won two Super Bowls. Different mindset in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. than it is in Minnesota. What is it gonna take for Minnesotans to kind of embrace the ups and the downs of their sports teams? Oh man, I'm okay, so I'm from Minnesota. So I have no advice. I'm living it with everybody else. I have no advice because I am the person that has been living this since I was a little kid. I mean, my dad brought us to the Vikings game where Gary Anderson missed the field goal. <laughs> I was at that game, Ron. And the devastation walking out of that, of the Metrodome, was, is something I will never forget. I was very young and I remember the silence and looking around. So I have no advice because I am part of that crew that needs advice from somebody else. And so all I can say is once you get, once we get one championship under our belt, I mean, yep. hopefully it happens soon, then I think the rest is history, right? You need that first that we ha haven't had in a long, long time. And I think that once we get that smooth sailing after that. Yeah, so, so you're saying being a transplant to Pittsburgh now, you have not come back with any confidence from the Pittsburgh fans. No, no. <laughs> I mean, they have a lot of confidence, which is great, but they're also real hard fans. They're tough. They are, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a blue it's a blue collar state. I mean, that's just what they do. It's it's what sports are what they have. Um last one then one fun one. You look at the the Lynx are struggling right now. Uh yeah. Twins are actually doing really well. Uh yeah. Wild missed it by a little bit. Vikings have a new coach. Timberwolves have young stars. Of those five, Lynx, all the Twins, Vikings, whatever, blah, blah, blah. who do you think has the best chance to win a Super Bowl or NBA championship or WNBA championship within the or the final? because hockey doesn't put an S on the end, uh, in the next like three or four years, who has the best chance to win one? Oh man, okay. I mean, historically the links, but I think they're in a place, you know, it ebb and flows, right? So yep. when you go all in and you win those championships, like the links said, they're going to ebb and flow. The years that come after that might be down years. I mean, I think, man, I'm really hopeful with the Vikings because I think the change of leadership is gonna add a spark. We saw mm -hmm. that with the wild too, right? I mean, yep. that really changed their whole dynamic. So I would say Vikings and wild is pretty, pretty here for me. I think it could be either. I worry a little bit with the wild because of the contract situation they have hanging on to the Prezi and Suter stuff, mm -hmm. but I don't know. It's going to be a fun year. I think with the Vikings, especially because we're going to see this change in leadership. And I think that's going to be a big deal. Well, yeah. And last one, Kyle Rudolph said he wants to be a Viking. He want to come back. Would you, if if the if the wild were an option, would you would you kind of nudge Jason to say, let's go back to Minnesota? Oh my gosh, of course. I think we've been really fortunate because the wild was home for us for a long time, and I love it here. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh has been an incredible city to be a part of. The team there, the organization, the city itself, we fell in love really quickly. So we love it there. I mean, if we don't stay there, of course. I mean, I. I'm always going to be a wild fan at heart. And I think that growing up here and then Jason being a part of the team for so long, it, it'll always be a part of us, but I don't know. I mean, it's just, I'm pretty, as long as he plays for a few more years, we'll be fine. <laughs>